Hello, this is Dan with Orbital Guitars, and welcome to part 3 of my GGBO 2022 build. Since the last video ended on gluing the neck to the body, this one will start with carving the transition between the neck and the body. This will follow the same process I used for the other carves, which starts with the angle grinder, then follows that with rasps, and finishes with a random orbital sander. I spent a lot of time with the rasps on this carve to make the neck to body transition as smooth and comfortable as possible. Next I'll use the same rasp to carve the volute. Since this guitar is going to have some Fishman Fluence pickups, I'm also going to install a Fishman rechargeable battery pack. What I'm doing here is routing a recess on the inside of the back plate that the charging port will fit into. Once the recess is made, I use a half inch drill bit to drill all the way through so that the charge port is accessible. And this is also the part of the build where the order of operations for me gets a little bit scattered, as there are a lot of various tasks that still need to be done that just don't look like they flow together very well. For example, now I'm cutting away a bit of the headstock veneer to create a slot for the nut to be installed. Speaking of the nut, it needs to be worked down to the appropriate size. I'll start by sanding it down a bit on the spindle sander, then refine it on the leveling beam before gluing it in place with a bit of super glue. With the nut now glued in place, I protect the headstock and fretboard with some masking tape before cutting the initial nut slots, and then sanding off all the sharp edges and corners and polishing it. Now I'll use shielding paint to shield the control cavities and pickup pockets. Some people seem to get the impression that I do this for grounding purposes, but that's not correct. This shielding is meant to act more like a Faraday cage, in order to keep outside electric signals from getting picked up by the guitar's internal electronics. Yeah. 
And then it's time for everybody's favorite part, applying the finish. For this build I'm applying a semi-gloss lacquer without doing any grain fill. This will cause the finish to still have some of the texture of the wood and somewhat looks like a well-polished oil finish. The added benefit of this style of finish is that it tends not to show fingerprints like a full gloss finish would. Now, while I apply lacquer to the front of the headstock, this is only so that it will match the body, the rest of the neck will not be lacquered. Instead, the neck is going to get only a little lacquer at the transition from the body to the neck, which I will slightly sand and then apply a single coat of oil to the neck. For this I use the Crimson Guitars Penetrating Oil Finish. I also apply a coat of fretboard oil to the fretboard. Now getting into the final assembly, I'm drilling for the screws that will attach the bridge. While I'm here, I will also drill for the ground wire to the bridge. Speaking of, this is a shallower roller bridge. Now installing the jack plate slightly recessed into the body. I tend not to show the wiring in my videos because it's difficult to film and kind of boring to watch, but here you can see me testing to make sure it was all done correctly and that everything works. Some people have asked about this little jar amp that I use. Uh, it's just called a jam jar, and if you google jam jar amp you can find them pretty easily. After confirming that everything works the way it's supposed to, I can screw on the back plates. I know a lot of people like using magnets to hold on their back plates, but I've never really liked that myself. If the back plate warps or shrinks at all, then the magnets might not line up anymore, and then your back plate will tend to just fall off. Screws just work. That said, you don't actually need to open up this guitar when the battery dies, so there's not a whole lot of reason to need to open it up in a hurry. Next, I'll install the tuners. This is a set of Goto locking tuners.
Here I'm using the two outer strings as reference in order to line up the pickups perfectly before drilling and screwing them into place. These also have gold-plated metal pickup rings that will not bend, crack, or break over time like some plastic ones do. Now that all the strings are on, I can test the action and finish filing the nut slots to the appropriate depth. Finally, I'll install some shallower S-locks, but first I'm going to swap the felt washers that came with them with some leather washers. These are more durable than the felt and look better too. All that's left is to drill the holes and screw the S-locks into place. And that brings us to the end of part 3 of my GGBO 2022 build. Social media links are in the description, as well as my business email and a link to my reverb shop where you can find any of my guitars that are currently up for sale, and some guitar body design routing templates for those who may be interested in building their own versions of my designs. Thank you for watching, and the full build and demo should be up in a week.